And welcome to the regular board meeting of the Castro Valley Unified School District. I'll call the meeting to order and ask if there are any, there are no requests to speak about items on the closed session agenda. And with that, I will recess our meeting to closed session. We'll be back live here at six o'clock. So thank you and we'll see you at six o'clock. We're live. Okay. Well, welcome back. And I'll call the meeting back to order from closed session. Welcome to everybody who's here online. And we're happy to have people actually here in the boardroom for the first time in 18 months or something. So we're glad to see you. Thanks for coming out. So um, I will report out from closed session on a motion by Trustee Whitaker, seconded by Trustee Adams, the board voted five to zero to approve a settlement agreement for OAH case number 20210503301 on terms involving reimbursement of a total of $53,000 for educational expenses and attorney's fees through February 25, 2023. So next on our agenda is approval of that agenda. Are there any um, changes to the agenda? No changes to the agenda. I'll move to approve the agenda. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll start the voting. Uh, Jennifer, welcome to our meeting tonight. Your preferential vote, please. Hi, yes. Thank you. Um, Lavender? Yes. Dolly? Yes. Dot. Yes. And I will vote yes to make it four to zero. Agenda is approved. I will add also that Trustee uh, Kuziak is traveling and is out of state tonight and will be back with us soon. Our mission statement from Trustee Adams. In partnership with the in partnership with the community, Castro Valley Unified School District educates students in a learning environment that is safe, nurturing, and culturally responsive. Students are guided by excellent inspired staff utilizing innovative instruction, curricula, and technology. Thank you, Dolly. So I'll go over a quick review of the uh, requirements of the Brown Act, which we work under. The board respects and encourages the public to comment on matters on the board agenda and within the board's jurisdiction. The board fully supports civil discourse and requests that everyone respect each other and their point of view. Individuals who would like to address the board must complete a request to speak form like this or via the Google form on the district website and submit it prior to the start of the agenda item. At the discretion of the board president, speaker cards may be accepted after the start of the agenda item. Your name will be called and you'll be, you will either come to the podium to speak or be unmuted during your turn, be allowed to make your public comments. After the allotted time, you will then be remuted. Individual speakers are asked to limit their comments to no more than three minutes unless the board decides otherwise. There are up to 30 minutes of public comment allowed on each agenda item. With board consensus, the president may increase or decrease the time allowed. This meeting is being recorded to prepare the official minutes. And also to co comply with the Brown Act during uh, the part where we listen to comments on items not on the agenda, the board may listen to the comments from the speakers under public comment but can neither discuss nor take action on the issues presented. Okay, so we're up to the student board member report. Jennifer. Hi, so um, we've gone out to a great start this year. Um, like I know me and like everyone else on campus is so happy to be back. Last Friday at CVHS, we hosted a welcome back rally in the quad where I actually saw Superintendent Amadi um, we just had a club day today in the quad as well. 
Um, this Friday, August 27th, we're having a CVHS choir alumni showcase where previous choir students are coming back um, to have a little showcase. We're having Hispanic Heritage Month on August 30th and back to school night will be September 2nd. And we're planning lots more um, events such as homecoming and fundraisers. Thank you. Great, thank you. Do we have a rep from CSEA here with us this evening? Any CV, we have, okay, CVTA, Mark, perhaps? Are you there, Mark? I am here, can you hear me? Reading, Mark. Like last year, can you hear me? Um, you can hear me? <laughs> Okay, great. Uh, so yeah, thanks guys. Uh, we're, we're approaching, we're getting close to uh, a month of school and um, it's been uh, very difficult uh, as you guys all know, um, but we're doing the best we can. Um, the students are doing a, my, my computer just trying, can you hear me? So I just, something just happened. Okay, sorry. Um, students are doing a great job. Uh, Jennifer, you can tell your, your student, your fellow students that um, I haven't heard anything from folks about, you know, kids disregarding mask policies or not taking this pandemic super seriously. So that's a really good credit to the, to the students. Um, our staff also is just working um, constantly around the clock to make sure that our students are served. Um, and that's, you know, again, a stressful job, but we're doing the best we can. Um, very difficult time. Um, and just as you guys know, uh, we do need to continue to work together. Um, when we do meet and we do discuss and we bring issues, we are bringing those on, on um, behalf of all of our members. And we really do have a huge interest in keeping our membership, our students and our community safe. And we know that we share that. Um, I'd also like to um, really just acknowledge once again, the, um, the great bargain that we've done that got us to testing. Um, I think that we have one of the best um, testing uh, routines in, in all of Alameda County when it comes to public schools, and that's because of our hard work. And so that's that's great. Um, and just really, uh, we're going to be bargaining, we're going to be meeting, we're going to be talking all year. And please, you know, um, make sure that, that you understand that we are coming from a position of safety and security. And um, just, we need to support our members so we can support our students. So thank you very much. And um, have a great evening. Thank you, Mark. Do we have any requests for comment on items? Terrific. We'll move on to the consent agenda. It's an action item, please. I'll move to approve the consent agenda. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Dolly. Is there any further discussion on the consent? If hearing none, I'll ask for a vote. Jennifer? Yes. Lavender? Yes. Dolly? Yes. Not. Yes. And I'll say yes. Uh, for the benefit of everyone, under the rules, we're required to do a roll call vote on every vote. We can no longer say all those in favor, all those opposed. The law changed. <laughs> okay, we're down to moving right along, I have to say, down to the reports. First one is, I think, probably of great interest to the people in the room. Name possible naming of the Castro Valley High School Stadium. So, thank you. Um, it's wonderful to see everybody here. Um, and um, this item um, is on the agenda since we received a request to name the Castro Valley High School Stadium. And I know we will hear from the audience uh, pretty soon. But I just uh, just kind of reviewing what we're going to do tonight. We have a board policy, board policy 7310, which is actually about naming the facility. And um, really, the intent of that policy is to kind of have the to, to have a criteria and a process for naming the facility. And um, in this case, when we um, when the board is considering naming a facility, um, we put together a, um, a call a naming committee. Um, and then that naming committee will come, will be reporting back to the board with recommendations for you to consider at that time. Um, so one of the things that I um, would recommend for us to put that committee together is for if um, we can possibly have maybe two board members to work with me to talk about the criteria, how many people, 
and then come up with an application to send out to make sure that we really give everybody an opportunity to be um, considered um, and then come back. Well, I think I saw two hands immediately pop up. Does that mean you want to make a comment or you, no, you're right. stepping forward to volunteer? Yeah. Volunteering. Very good. Okay. Uh, I think that's a good plan. I mean, the, the we've had this policy for a while. We've This is our first case, yeah. in all honesty. So we've never done this. So thank you for raising the issue. <laughs> I think it's a good case, probably. So, uh, But I think this will cause us to actually test out our policy and make it actually work. So this is uh, a good thing, I think, as I'm sure we're going to have other uh, recommendations and so forth, and we'll want to be ready to take care of those. So we have two volunteers. And so you were suggesting, I think, that, that, we that could, they... Yeah, that we could meet together um, and kind of talk about, you know, usually there's like eight or 10 people max on a committee kind of make sure that we have a diverse group, obviously people, you know, um, so that we get to hear um, the different opinions and yeah. and really just listen um, and then come back and report back to the board to make a decision. We do have people who want to talk tonight though, so we should hear from them. The first card I got was from uh, Michelle Smith, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> couldn't quite read the last one. But welcome under any circumstances. Thank you for coming. Sure, of course. I am um, proud to represent my family tonight. Um, so thank you, Board President Howard, Trustees, and Superintendent Amati for agendizing this important request. We appreciate your time and your consideration. Um, I'm going to start with a quote that a friend shared with me recently. We did not plant the trees from which we enjoy the shade. Um, John Brosnan planted proverbial trees all over Castro Valley High School. This is probably abundantly clear from the letters that I hope that you've all received and the emails you've gotten in the past couple of weeks. It was not hard to rally the troops uh, to share their memories and their feelings and their admiration for Coach Brosnan, and you will likely hear some more of that tonight. Honoring Coach Brosnan by putting his name on the football facility where he spent such a big part of his life is a fitting tribute to his work his passion, his dedication to the community, the students, and the district. Um, but this decision is also a fitting tribute to yours, because I think you have an opportunity to honor the history of your school district by honoring Coach Brosnan's considerable place in it to a new generation of students and families. I think you have an opportunity to bring your community together to celebrate at a time when a celebration is badly needed. I think you have an opportunity to demonstrate your commitment to your educators, who are the backbone of every student's success and development. And I think you have an opportunity to speak your values through the values that Coach Brosnan brought to that field every single day. So thank you again for your willingness to consider this. And I know that Coach Brosnan's family and friends are willing to support you in whatever way you need to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is uh, Oscar Sakamoto. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm a um, uh, Castle Valley High School um, teacher, retiree. I taught in the district for 35 years. I was a physical, ed physical education teacher and a basketball coach. Um, since I'm talking about an introduction, I'd like to inter uh, introduce uh, John's uh, immediate family, his two daughters. Um, Kathy and Sue, and the third daughter, uh, Mo, could not be in attendance uh, this evening because she had uh, recently had a hip, hip, hip surgery. Um, um, now, getting into John, uh, John was a physical education uh, instructor, uh, athletic director, and the head uh, varsity uh, football coach for 20 plus years. And um, I have a few uh, uh, adjectives or words that he was uh, very approachable. He was open-minded, very firm, very flexible, and he was well-respected uh, by his, both his peers and his uh, 
uh, in his students. And I think the big thing on John that I can recall is that uh, he was a strong supporter of uh, gender uh, equi uh, equity, uh, the uh, Title IX uh, way back in the early 80s. And uh, John, um, the big thing was that uh, he wanted to be known that uh, uh, he would be a student, uh, support student, uh, or promote student athletics. And every time he would, uh, uh, well, let me see. <laughs> yeah, he. he Yeah, he expected his players to uh, achieve in the class classroom and then play football. And football is like, you know, riding a roller coaster uh, where you have your, you know, you go up and down and high points, low points and so and so forth. And um, so riding the roller coaster, you know, the players get ex exposed, exposed to many um, lifestyle uh, skills, uh, such as accountability, commitment, uh, uh, decision-making, uh, mental toughness, teamwork. Uh, so in closing, uh, uh, thank the uh, school board, the district, the media, and the community for uh, making this uh, uh, dedication, uh, uh, make it happen. So uh, with that, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments and thank you for your service to Castro Valley High School as well. We appreciate that. Our next speaker is Kelsey Wood. Hello, I am one of John Brazen's granddaughters, representing, um, I think there's seven of us grandchildren, great grandchildren. Um, I'll make this quick, but towards the end of Michelle and uh, Mr. Sakamoto's speeches, they talked about um, words like mental toughness and character and values and hard work and poise and showing up for one another, teamwork, team spirit. Um, my job day to day is working as a practice coordinator and I manage and get to speak regularly to engineers on projects across the United States. Um, I have actually gone through my grandpa's, sorry, I'm nervous, I don't know why. This is a natural thing for me to talk about to most people, but um, when he passed, I wasn't in this position yet, but I got to go through his things in his, um, his space where he worked on art projects and uh, building different things for family members and lamps, tons of things. And um, I found a paper of his that included a triangle with all of the qualities needed to lead a team and to be successful with one another. Um, and I get to share that with 350 people whenever I get the chance to. So the things that he was able to share with his team members, um, I get to share that with you know, high level engineers across the country. So it spreads out to all different types of people, athletes, um, technicians, designers. So his word is really, really taking flight um, past his life. So hopefully the field can represent that uh, for the years to come. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments from the board or questions? Is there a call? I'm sorry. Oh, it is there a call? Sorry. Or the name. Oh. So I can, um, can I do the comments? I don't see it. Yeah. So is that it? Oh. Dot? Oh, you're asking for comments now? Is that one? Okay. I think we're ready for it. I don't, that person I don't see on there now. Okay. Um, so when we got the first email, I um, have not lived in Castro Valley for very long, 17 years, so I did not know the name John Brosnan. 
Um, and so I reached out to some people that I know that have been in the community longer asking, well, who is this? And should we, should we consider this request? And every answer that I got was, yes, you should definitely, if you're going to name it after anyone, it's going to be after this person who has touched so many lives in Castro Valley. And it also made me think that, you know, I don't, I didn't know who this person is that was so grand that people are asking us to name this beautiful stadium after him. Um, and it's, uh, it's an opportunity for our students to know that also. Um, so I think we're on the right track to put together this naming committee and, and have a deep discussion about these decisions that we make. Any other comments? Do you want to say anything? I yeah, I just wanted to, first of all, I wanted to say, I see Coach Baz over there. My son played basketball. <laughs> Our neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but um, I, I wanted to say, I think, um, you know, there, this gives us an opportunity to um, really talk about that. And there are people in this community you know, um, teachers and staff members and coaches who have done so much for the community, whether it be naming a facility or having a place also for, you know, for us to think about like honoring and having some information about these folks. Because if you weren't here then, you know, right. the, the new generation, the people that are here need to see, um, you know, the impact they've had. So we'll work together uh, with the committee and come back to the board um, for consideration. So um, the request, the first email request was to name the field for John Brosnan for the 2021 football season. Um, and I'm wondering if there's something that we can do at this point while we're discussing it to still honor Mr. Brosnan. Um, that's not a, a permanent thing as the request was for the 2021 season while we're discussing um, how to have a more fitting permanent tribute for this teacher and coach. Yeah, I think we could talk to the, um, to the high school about maybe just mentioning or saying something at the football game and, and, and really recognizing him. Maybe dedicating this at, season, at this time, season. this game or this game or something like that. Yeah. I, I would just want to say because he touched all of your lives and he's your family and I know what it's like to lose someone that you love very much. And so putting this together for his memory is such a great way to, to live on in his legacy. So I want to thank the family for coming out tonight because I just, you know, my heart goes out to you. And I also want to say to the board, I'm really looking forward to this committee because I want to make sure that we equitably honor our community members and make sure that there's an equitable process to do that. Yeah, I'll just say also that, you know, it's been sort of alluded to here that I think one thing we are not very good custodians of our own history. And I think, you know, I've lived here 27 years. <laughs> in the community and i this is the first i've heard of him i'm sorry but uh so but clearly uh the thing that's really nice about this is in many cases you see where things are named after somebody because they contributed money and okay that's important because we all money makes things work in lots of ways but this is for service mm -hmm. uh, to the community and i think that's really uh, a terrific part of this. So uh, for those who came tonight, and you might be a little disappointed that we're not actually voting on it tonight, we're a very process-driven organization. Uh, and I would just say thank you very much for putting us, putting us on the road for this and getting us thinking about how we do this, not only in this case, but in a larger sense, where we really do honor our history here. We have a number of other people. I'm sure all of us can think of people who have done wonderful things around our schools, whether they're an employee of the school or whether they're a parent in the community. Uh, there are a lot of people who have really given a lot of, to the community. So 
thanks to all of you for coming and, and uh, pushing us on this. We appreciate the push. <laughs> yes. Uh, I just wanted to say I'm honored to be on this committee uh, to take a look at this issue and I will, uh, you know, spend my due diligent time um, examining this. I've lived here 31 years. I didn't know Coach Brosman, but um, I will, I will know about him soon. <laughs> yeah. Any final comments? No, nope, we'll come back. Great. Thank you all very much. So much. We'll move on to item B, which is the superintendent's update for us. Yes. Thank you. Let's see. All right. Tonight, um, we have COVID related topics and then other district topics. I'm glad some people are sharing. <laughs> All right. Uh, COVID testing, I just wanted, uh, the reason I put these items on is we um, actually, uh, Ms. Kair does a beautiful job, always kind of looking out for questions and emails and things like that. And we wanted to cover these topics just so that we can inform the community about some of these questions. So new appointment line. Um, so before we had heard there were some um, issues around or the line was too long. So thank you, Ms. Chan. Um, who worked with the with national labs and we have now two lines one for appoint, those who have appointments and those who don't have appointments and we're working a little bit also beyond that around if there's a possibility for us to do something um, in addition for athletes so that they're not you know um, with everybody else and there are not too many the other piece is finalizing logistics for the mobile testing at all the school sites and I want to thank uh, our team here um, led actually in this on this topic uh, that uh, that Dr. Zamora is has been working with his team and also Ms. Chan to make sure that we have these mobile clinics throughout schools every other week for each school. And it's a lot there's a lot of logistics that had to be worked out, but I think we're going to be ready very soon to roll that out as well. So that um, students, this is not for parents to go on campus. This is for students um, in elementary and middle school and Redwood because Castro Valley High School already has the CFA um, testing site. So for, for students to be tested and also for staff. Yes. Um, so you said we're prioritizing athletes for testing? No, no, we're, we're trying to make sure that they don't, that a whole bunch of them all of a sudden come. Uh -huh. And then it makes the line really long. Okay. So we're either going to say, we'll come at this time okay. or come at this time because, oh, we're, we win. It, because it makes it really hard when everybody goes all at once. So maybe there's a time that's easier for us to okay. set that aside for them um, so that they're not, uh, there's no bottleneck and they're not actually taking the time that other people need to take. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> no, good question. Good question. And then the other piece I um, wanted to also say is, uh, I think once we get started, the, the nice thing is that the families who want their children tested at their school site, when the mobile clinic goes, they fill out one um, permission slip, but then they go in and um, fill out whenever they want test my student. So thank you for all the hard work that went into that. Uh, positive case dashboard is another um, question, another area that um, we have had some questions or, or inquiries. So we put down number of um, staff and students on campus, 9,668. Percentage of cases is 0.32. So as you know, um, we have on our website, we, um, this is updated when there is a new case. So sometimes at the beginning, people were like, oh, it's not updated. Well, because we didn't have a new case that day. So um, also, so CVUSD cases of students and staff are less than 1% of the population, which is well below the community case rate um, that we have. So this is just our dashboard. 
And then just a little, um, a few more comments about that. Of the positive cases that we've been managing in our district, there is really no known spread within our schools. And I want to really commend our families because they're doing an absolutely incredible job, very positive. They're using that screener before the children come to school and they're immediately telling us this is what that's why I'm keeping my child. So the reason that students or around them, those in close contact, get that message is because we have to go back to two days before. They were asymptomatic. And it's great, you know, to the credit of the families that are actually paying close attention and keeping the students home when they see a symptom. So that's why we go back. Yes. Can you please remind me, how does that impact our ADA? So actually, when they are not in their seats, we do not get ADA. Um, but all districts are facing that same, having the same question. And I know that Ms. Chan is working with our auditors and things like that, but there is a possibility to do short-term independent study. Um, and we're working on, uh, on that with the auditors to see, because short-term independent study usually looks different. You have to write everything down. And frankly, in 2021, most of our stuff is online. So we're working on that. But yes, this is a, this is, you know, we have, kids who are quarantining yep. and then we have support for them. Um, so I just wanted to mention that when you see the cases, the great thing is that they were asymptomatic before. That means that as soon as they have symptoms, the families are doing a great job letting us. And then vaccination. Um, so we do have a vaccination clinic coming up. Thank you, Ms. Chan, August 26th from 3.30 to 7, La Familia, thank you, La Familia Community Health Services team. They will be administrating the, administering the first dose and then um, coming back for the second dose for anyone over 12 years old. Um, Alameda County um, vaccination dashboard, they just updated this because I was really, I was looking at it a couple of, a few days ago and I thought 51%. So I now feel I feel now much, much better that Castrovelli at least 91% first dose. So they're getting their second doses and fully vaccinated in Castrovelli is 76.2%. That's pretty awesome. Hopefully we'll get much, much higher. We want um, to get all those 91% and more to get their second dose. Staff vaccination, as you know, is required. So far, we have had 85% of our staff verified that they're vaccinated. So we have verification from them. We're still seeking more. And then anyone who's unvaccinated uh, is testing once a week. So that's great news. And then other district updates. Uh, you know, this picture down here is actually of our uh, two students who led the rally that uh, Jennifer was talking about. It was awesome, the cheerleaders. Um, everybody, um, the kids were all out cheering. Um, so one of the things that I want to just kind of continue to remind us is that supporting students through our MTSS, which is multi-tiered system of support, is constantly a work. We always look at best first instruction in the classroom, standards-based, and then tiered academic intervention, as well as social emotional learning and support that students need in order to be able to focus and learn their academics. And then one of the things that we're really looking at this year and um, reading and learning and working together is uh, this idea of equitable grading and uh, an assessment system um, to support students and to really um, have a better picture of what students know and are able to do. And then of course, home and school connection, very important. I was very pleased to hear that, uh, that the uh, parent organizations at schools when we met at our parent leadership council reported they're already doing a lot of activities outside of school and they're doing a lot of great things for students and they have membership has gone up actually. So that was great. Um, and then of course, as you heard from Jennifer, clubs, activities and sports are all going on and uh, we were still waiting for some direction about athletics and uh, choir and um, 
and music and all of that. And we did get some things today that they're working on. So hopefully we'll get some more information about that. I think that's my presentation tonight. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Any questions? I think it is good news overall. I mean, uh, we have not had a huge number of uh, cases within the school. So it does sound like the in-school transmission is very, very low. That's good. And students are doing a beautiful job following directions and, and staff as well, everybody. And clearly that equitable grading, I think, is one of the most revolutionary things we're going to do this year. So that I think we're going to hear about that in a couple of meetings or so. And yes. that'll be really a, a good thing to, to hear about. Yeah, we were thinking that um, if you would like the October board workshop would be on equitable grading and kind of just sharing information with you, getting engaged in that conversation and letting you know the process that we're going through. Um, so um, I see a lot of heads nodding in agreement. So that sounds like a very good thing. So thanks for doing that. Thank you. October, I was looking at it. Yes, October 20th. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. We'll move on to item C. The uh, all the work this summer. Yes. Yes. Um, I would like to invite um, Aaron Ackerman. He's the director of maintenance operations and transportation. Um, this uh, 18 days today, Aaron. <laughs> um, so he picked up where Mr. Krabs left off, and so we're really happy about that. So um, he's been um, with the district for how many years? Uh, it'll be 18 years in the 18 summer. years, yes, wow. 18 years. So, um, okay. Welcome in your new role. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, well, first of all, I'm glad the cloud, crowd cleared out, a little less pressure on me for my first ever presentation here. <laughs> so I've got that going for me. Okay, thank you. So we actually had a pretty busy summer, um, even though uh, we hadn't been in school for 18 months or so. We had a lot of work to do when we came, uh, came to our summer projects. So we'll start with the pool. Uh, the pool was very busy this summer. We had people renting it uh, between Hard and the CV Crocs six days a week from 6 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. So we were very busy taking care of the pool. Yeah. Uh, the first thing that we did was we identified that the high dive was structurally unsound. And so we needed to remove that. So we took care of that early this summer so that we didn't have any issues with it being rented and somebody climbing up there and just having a bad accident. We did not want that to happen. So we took care of that. We spent a lot of time in the pump room. We rebuilt some valves, um, replaced one of our chlorine pumps. We have some new covers. The, the ones that are on there are pretty old. We have not had a chance to put them on yet, but they are there. Those are them up in the top right corner. They're nice and shiny and new, and uh, we're looking forward to being able to get those on there. Uh, we also installed a windscreen around the entire perimeter of the pool complex to reduce the amount of debris that blows into the pool. And that has been very beneficial. It saved us a lot of time having to skim it out and vacuum it out. So it's, it's been a really good addition to the complex. And we were able to match the high school colors with the forest green. So it worked out aesthetically as well. Oh, for some reason, those pictures turned sideways. Sorry about that. On my computer, they were all the correct way. Uh, we've done a lot of HVAC work over the summer. And the funny thing we noticed is when no one was here, the HVAC systems worked perfectly. We had no issues. <laughs> and as soon as everybody comes back, we have uh, been scrambling trying to get everything working. Uh, we've done a lot of work uh, with the facilities department and their contractors trying to make sure that we're able to get everything functioning properly, uh, make sure the fans are running so we have good circulation through the rooms, make sure we have good filtration. Um, making sure that uh, we're bringing in as much fresh air as we can to keep everybody safe. Um, we replaced all the filters in our HVAC units just before everybody came back. So everything is fresh and we're ready to, uh, to go until the end of fall when we'll replace them again. 
can ask a question? Yes, of course. Um, when there are fires, does that um, reduce the time that filters are, um, I guess, their lifespan because they're sucking in more stuff? Yes, that would definitely impact. Uh, so that's something that we are looking at uh, being in fire season. Yeah. Um, Sharon and I have also been looking at uh, coming up with a metric for when we close our dampeners and uh, reduce the amount of fresh air that we're bringing in so that uh, we're not bringing in that smoky air into our classrooms. Um, so we're, we're working on that together, trying to come up with, with something that works out, keeps everybody safe and healthy. Thank you. Of course. So again, apologies for the sideways pictures. Uh, we've done a lot of irrigation work over the summer. Um, I know that with the drought, it's very important for us to reduce our water consumption. And there's a lot of old irrigation around this district that has been there for 40 plus years. So we've had quite a few leaks that we've discovered. Uh, we've got one at Creekside here, uh, the high school soccer field, Redwood High School, Chabot Elementary. Uh, so we're going around identifying the leaks, repairing them, replacing valves, just trying to make sure that everything is um, as upgraded as we can get it uh, so that we're not wasting water and we're using the water that uh, we have more efficiently to make sure we're able to keep our fields nice without uh, wasting water. Because I saw these pictures and they were the right side up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> <laughs> so strange. <laughs> well, I'm not uh, progressing here, Amy. Can I, Sorry, can I just say, I really appreciate you and the, the team conserving water. I mean, in, in the times that we're facing, I'm continuing to be so happy with the work that your department does to really be mindful of the environment. So thank you. Of course. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's been a definite balancing act trying to keep the fields looking nice and also conserve water. So we've been working hard. Okay. Uh, so here we have some brush clearing uh, that we did. Um, we did a lot of uh, brush clearing for um, reducing fire danger around all the campuses. Um, no worries. Um, so as you can see in the top left, we had some pretty thick weeds uh, up at Independent that we had to deal with. Uh, the guys had fun with that one. And then uh, the top right, those are all bags lined up that were cleared from the other side of that fence. So we did quite a bit of work up there, making sure that our fire lines were good. Um, Canyon was another big irrigation job. Um, we actually did the repairs that are in these pictures and came back a month later and had another leak right next to that one. So we've got another hole just like it right now that we're working on trying to get that uh, taken care of so we can get the softball field up and running for softball season that starts on Monday. Uh, we can go to the next slide. This is some more uh, fire clearing that we did. This is the back uh, fire lane at Canyon going down to Crow Canyon Road. It was all overgrown with trees. Um, there was no way a fire truck would have been able to get up there. So the guy spent uh, quite a few days clearing that up. And as you can see on the top right, it looks much better now. Very, uh, very easy for somebody to get through there. On the left side there, um, that's at Redwood High School. Um, the whole hillside around Redwood High School, um, we had a company come in and cut a bunch of it down, and then we also went in and cleared out a bunch of it ourselves. Uh, we had a lot of overgrowth that hadn't been dealt with for quite a few years, uh, so that was quite a project getting that all cleared up. And then the bottom right uh, is at Stanton. We had some trees that were growing over the power lines and pushing them around, and it just didn't look like a good situation, so we went in and cleared it all out to make sure that in a heavy wind storm, we're not going to knock the power out or cause a fire or something. Well, this is the fun one. The guys were very excited to send me the pictures on the bottom here, uh, but I'll start with the, the sink on the top. This is at the state preschool at Alma. Uh, they contacted us and said that the sinks that they had were not in compliance with the state guidelines. They needed to have two sinks so that they could uh, prep food in one and wash dishes in the other. So they ordered this beautiful sink and we installed it for them and worked out really well. 
And then the pictures on the bottom uh, are from independent. We have been trying to accommodate eating outdoors so that kids can be distanced and when they have their mask off, uh, they're out in the air, not all enclosed in the cafeteria. And so at independent, all of their picnic tables were on the lower blacktop. And so we had to move them all up and they are very, very heavy tables. So the guys, I don't know if it was absolutely necessary, but they convinced me that they needed to use the heavy equipment. <laughs> so they fired that up and made quick work of it. And uh, they had fun doing it and got to send me cool pictures. So I think that worked out well for everyone. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Hydration stations have gone around. Uh, I believe we have installed 18 across the district. Um, we want to make sure that we are providing options for kids to fill their bottles with filtered water. Um, we were originally, when COVID started, we were trying to reduce using the bubbler on the drinking fountain and having people touching it and, and be close to it. And that's where it started. And we just kind of kept it going and have put them in at every site around the district. And we're at 18 now. I believe we have four or five more that we can still install. Um, top right is some lights at Canyon Middle School. Uh, we went around, again, the guys love to bust out the heavy equipment to, I'm pretty sure that could have been done with a ladder, but they convinced me that they needed the bucket truck for that. So uh, we went around, those are on the exterior of the gym. Uh, we replaced them to make sure that uh, we have good lighting everywhere so that we don't have anywhere that somebody could trip and fall in the dark or something like that. And he looks really safe doing it. So. He does. I think he's only about five feet off the ground. They, they cropped the bottom of the picture. <laughs> um, and kind of similar to the HVAC, the sewers worked just fine when nobody was here using them. We didn't have any sewer calls in the entire time that everyone was gone. As soon as everybody comes back, sewer calls left and right. Uh, so the guys have done a great job responding to those, uh, getting out and, and dealing with those and getting the bathrooms back up and running as quickly as possible. Um, we did do a lot of work over the summer using the bigger equipment to clear some lines. We brought in some outside companies to uh, get rid of some roots that we had in some lines that were causing some blockages. Um, and so I think we're in a pretty good place right now uh, to, to deal with the sewer backups in a quick manner. Next slide. Uh, this is right up the hill behind us at the adult school. Um, we were asked by uh, Beth Cutter, the principal up there, if we could install some speed bumps. They were having some issues with some people speeding through the parking lot. So we went, uh, assessed it. We got these speed bumps. The guys put them in um, pretty quickly. They, I think it took them about a day and a half to install. Uh, there are six sets of speed bumps around the loop of that parking lot. And uh, I, I believe they've been working pretty well. I've driven over them a few times. They don't budge. They give you a nice uh, rattle to make sure you're aware that you're going a little too fast. So I think uh, that one was a big success for us. And that concludes the fun picture part of my presentation. Now I just have uh, a list for you. So moving on to operations, um, this is mostly the custodial aspect of the department. Uh, we were pretty busy this summer, even though we didn't have a traditional school year. We still did our normal uh, deep cleaning of the campuses over the summer. Uh, the first bullet point, we, we deep cleaned and refinished all four of the gym floors around the district. Uh, that is something I'm very proud of, and I wish that I had included a picture of that. It's the first time that we have done that in-house. We have previously contracted that out. Uh, I talked to our supplier of chemicals and he said, I can get you all the stuff that you need. I can train your guys. You can do it yourself for a fraction of the cost. Awesome. So we got uh, a crew together. They had a great time. They spent a week and a half going to all four sites and we did our own gym floors. And I think that's the way we're going to do it in the future now. So that was a, a really fun project for the guys this summer. Uh, we deep cleaned all 13 campuses. Um, that's just the, the school campuses. We also did uh, the, the district office here and the adult school, which are not included in the 13. Uh, we assisted with a lot of moves at sites, teachers switching rooms, uh, old teachers, or not old teachers, teachers retiring, <laughs> new teachers coming in, having to, to move things around. Uh, so we, we assisted with that. 
Uh, we had summer school at five campuses this summer. Um, at Stanton, they used every single classroom. So that was a mad scramble after summer school to get the deep cleaning done, but uh, we were able to pull that off. Uh, we reset locker combinations at the middle schools and high schools. We did not do as many as we normally do because they weren't used last year, uh, but that's still uh, a pretty tedious task to have to turn that you have to put a key in the back and turn the dial a certain number of times and it's it's not a fun job so I commend the custodians that uh, do that for us. Uh, we had a lot of rentals uh, for sports groups. Uh, we had soccer, swimming, um, softball, and baseball all rent facilities from us this summer. So we kept those facilities clean and safe for everybody, open and closed for them, um, and had a really great summer assisting those groups. And then um, the custodians assisted with the maintenance department uh, with the pool operations for the summer. So anytime the pool is open, we have to test the chemical levels and that is done by the maintenance department. So they were there every morning testing the chemicals. The custodians were there every night closing everything up, cleaning the facility. So they really worked well together, making sure that we had a clean and safe pool operation this summer. And the transportation department. I wish that I had put that first bullet point in 24 font. We completed and passed the CHP inspections with no violations. And I could not be more proud of the work that Tracy Vieira, our transportation supervisor, did to make sure that that happened. Um, usually you expect to have some minor violations and like fix it ticket kind of things that you can adjust and get cleared, but no violations. We were very, very proud of that. Um, we are working very hard to bring all of our special ed transportation in-house. Um, that is something that we really want to transport our own students as much as we can. Um, we are buying another van, Susie. <laughs> uh, we're hiring more special ed van drivers so that we can transport our own special ed students. Um, so Tracy worked very hard to make those routes to get those uh, students transported and uh, make the bus routes for us. Um, all summer long, we had our bus drivers running uh, students to and from the hubs to summer school. Uh, we had buses going all over the place all summer. So the bus drivers did not get much of a summer off either. So they were very busy. Um, like I mentioned, we're trying very hard to get our special ed students transported. We have increased our numbers. Uh, I was trying to check with Tracy before I came in, but I wasn't able to get the numbers back of exactly how many we're transporting, but it is increasing. Um, every week we're able to add more students. And then uh, lastly, we've updated the transportation sanitization procedures. Uh, we just acquired some electrostatic sprayers last week to use in our buses and vans. Makes it much easier for the drivers to disinfect. They just quickly go through. Uh, after each route and are able to disinfect the buses and provide a, a clean and safe environment for the next group. So that's all I have. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yes. I just wanted to thank you. Uh, the maintenance department here at Castro Valley Unified is really great. And uh, Oh, do I have three minutes? <laughs> it's okay. Uh, and um, I just want to thank you also for uh, doing some of the in-house stuff and helping with uh, the finances, the gyms, and the special education, transportation, working on that and keeping that in-house as well. I think it'll be uh, both save money and uh, be uh, better, for instance, for the special ed kids. You have to have it with us in this district. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer. Okay, I also wanted to say thank you because, um, okay, for me, I've been on varsity swim since my freshman year. And I don't know how many of you guys have experienced this, but swimming and like swimming super fast and then being hit in the face by a leaf is the worst <laughs> experience ever. Um, so I thought it was super cool the um, windscreen you said that was installed around the pool to avoid debris. That's awesome. So thank you. Of course, thank you. 
I just wanted to welcome you again and thank you. See, it wasn't as hard as you thought it was going to be to present to us and and we wish you the best for the year. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, well, thank you for all, all that you've thank done. You, all. you know, that, that was really great work. Yeah, we're very fortunate to have such a great team. We really are. Thank you, Aaron. And here's Mrs. True Quince. It is my turn. Good evening. It is good to be back in person. <laughs> I haven't been in here at, um, for a board meeting here for a long time. Um, so we have been busy also trying to get more work done. And let's look at some pictures. So right out here for Alma Preschool, we redid the safety surface that's under the play structure. Um, just because the old one was starting to crumble and, and, and heave a bit so that um, maintenance gave us a call and we looked at it and said, you know, we shouldn't patch this anymore. Let's just redo it. So we got that in for the summer and it looks great. I think the site really enjoys it. And then for Chabot, we're kind of in our last phase for Chabot so that um, in many of our elementary sites and uh, we'll see what a secondary wants to do later is we take their interim housing portables and what well, we assess for our older portable classrooms, the age and whether it's, you know, um, cost effective to, uh, you know, renovate them or just to replace them with our newer um, interim housing ones that we bought. So for Chabot, we removed three of the oldest portables and replaced it with five. So they have a net gain of two classrooms which I think they are very happy about. And uh, we repainted, um, added a, a covered walkway area that's between the multi-purpose room and the classroom building. That's the upper left um, picture. So they have a little more space for um, outdoor lunch. And um, it cleared up the yard so that, because when we put the interim housing in, it you know squeezed the yard a bit. So now it opens up a little bit more. Um, and we're still in the process of doing their uh, electrical switchgear consolidation, but that's kind of off to the side and we're coordinating with PG&E when they're able to do it after hours. And then independent, um, um, we've done, I think this summer, like seven classrooms in um, renovations inside. So that's like our flooring, painting, ceiling tiles, um, windows and the uh, shades, so some pictures. And, um, you know, I, I think I showed this before at Proctor, but independent is kind of similar when you look at the left picture on the right is kind of the before picture of the old furnace that is there. So when we've um, gone through and put in the new HVAC, we go through back now again and remove the furnaces um, so that, you know, that one's more of an obstruction that comes out versus uh, Proctor was more like inset into some casework. So we took it out so it makes like a nice, a uh, flat surface for them to have more um, area um, to put shelving if they so please. And then we also um, redid the front office. Uh, years ago when we first started, you know, Independent had its office kind of towards the back of the school, which is used to be the front of the school. So for safety and security, we had moved them to the front into two classrooms. But uh, we were never really able to do the full renovation of making it um, uh, a more, um, you, you know, a, a better usable space for them so that it creates a, a nice spacious front office that's welcoming for the students and parents right outside their drop off and a new nurses area with the restroom that's um, right in front and a, a staff room that's close by, that's kind of very central to the school. Um, we redid some ADA work um, and we're working on the amphitheater. They're working on the grading right now. And then for Marshall, well, for all, a lot of the elementary schools we went through and had installed the solar arrays. So now, Summer, we went back and paved the areas that are under there that's um, usually close to the play yard so that it creates more play yard space or more 
uh, lunch space. So it, it creates a multi-purpose space. So, you know, as we had talked about before, you know, wherever we try to put something, we try to get the most bang for a buck out there and um, use too. So Marshall uses it for um, some lunch areas. And then this is Marshall's amphitheater. They're actually a little further along. They have all of the concrete poured for the seating and the stairs. This was maybe like two weeks ago. Um, and so they just finished their last pour on the flat work right in front and it looks really good. Um, we're still waiting on the steel. So that's a little behind like this railings, the shade structure, that'll come later. We put in a new ramp. Um, well, this ramp is for from the lower to the upper playgrounds. So for um, Marshall, we really looked at uh, making it more accessible and looking at what we're missing uh, in the site. So that's um, coming along. Uh, Proctor is another shot similar to Marshall of uh, paving the area under the solar for uh, more yard space. This is Proctor's um, amphitheater that is, it's, it's pretty much finished. We're waiting for, I think, fencing. A little, we have temp fencing right now, but we have some gates that we need to put in, finish up some of the landscaping, and then we're almost ready to open that up for the school to use. Another shot from kind of close to the top. And this one will work um, picture of like the restrooms that we're renovating this kind of in demo and then their shade structure for Proctor is in another area closer to their multi-purpose room. So we've been um, trying to dig the footings. We've had to go back and do some redesign because we, the auger they had wasn't able to get down um, 16 feet. And it just, it was hard yet when we got deep or when we felt like we made some headway, the, the dirt would actually cave in on itself and we didn't get anywhere. So we're redesigning instead of like pure footings, we're doing spread footings on them. So but it's, it's coming along, it will, it'll, we will get it done. Um, at Canyon, we're working on a building or, or we call it F-Wing. It's F-Wing. Um, so we have all the classrooms moved out and we're working on demolition and painting. Um, so you can see what's above the ceiling. Um, and then for the high school working on 200 building. So you can see this is the restrooms and um, the trench, the middle picture is the trench we have to dig to connect to the sewer. It's like eight foot down, eight feet down. Um, so that was, and the contractor actually dug that by hand. We were very impressed. <laughs> with that one and they did it really fast too but it's all covered up it's connected so we're um they've been working on um like the seismic upgrade they they're doing so they they take out all of the paneling put in additional hold downs put in um shear walls um take out the hvac uh put in you know they're waiting for the hvac but they're prepping for when the units come they're replacing all of the um over the years we I mean, you know, I think maintenance with the, the staff and the money that they have would sometimes put in the plastic sheeting um, where there's used to be glass. So we're going through and taking out all the glass and put or taking out the plastic, putting in the glass or wherever it might be cracked. We're also doing that. So you can see some of that in the pictures. And then it gets to the fi my, my final slide, which you know talks about our financial update. And we are doing um, very well where um, we spend about 93 million total um, and we still have about 20 million encumbered. We're about 76% um, way through and we're still on budget. And I think we're, um, I mean, the, there has been an impact in terms of material shortage and delays, but we've generally been able to um, absorb it at this point, you know, um, in the future, we'll, we'll have to see, but I think so far we're doing really well. And it's just what, what ends up happening. It just ends up being very almost weird. Like one day it would be like, we can't get paint because they're missing this component and the paint that didn't ship. 
And somehow we're having to run like a hundred miles to get like paint to finish the classrooms. But our contractors have been very good to work with us on it. So that is that is all. Any questions? I want to say uh, your management of this whole has uh, Measure G project has been amazing, and to see us be financially stable at this point with all the work that's continually to be done, and you know, I I am continually thankful for your way to innovate in strange situations. I mean, you talk about there not being material, um, but you've been able to take a mess and make it better and and turn it into something that that's usable and great for our community so just want to thank you for your dedication oh, to this project you. and and all the work that you've been continually doing uh, for our district thank you i want to um make a couple of comments because i love how chabot looks because the, i think i always looked at those portables with the walkway just was like, oh. And there's more space, um, just everything that has been done is incredible. But the, the amphitheaters are really like so nice to have. I don't think because there's it's COVID and the pandemic, we haven't really been able to use, like it's really a great place for the community too, at some point as we get back. Um, but also um, the um, Office of Independent looks absolutely amazing and the amphitheater at Marshall, just mm -hmm. everything that has been done. And I, I same um, as you heard, I, I mean, when I look at other districts, to be on budget, on time with all of this work and be innovative is really important. I wanted to just share with everybody that we are making a video of Measure G projects. I know that uh, Trustee Howard and I um, did a little, uh, you know, 30 seconds um, yes. with song and dance, <laughs> but they're taking videos with the, you know, um, doing all of that. So when it's ready, we'll have it um, available. So thank you, Sharon, and your team. Yeah, Dolly. I just want to say I did a, a small project this summer. I, I didn't do, but I uh, had someone putting some wood cabinets in and was shocked by the price of wood. Yeah. So um, I know in a, you know, my small sense and then just amplify that what um, if you're able not to go over budget, even with those kinds of like cost overruns, that's really great. Good job. <laughs> yes, yeah, so thank you very much. You know, Measure G has really just dramatically changed all our campuses mm -hmm. and it's not even done yet. So uh, yeah. lots more to come. So thanks very much for a great report. To both of you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We'll move on to item D, the new and closed positions on request for personal action. Uh, yes, so um, attached uh, is actually a couple of pages of um, positions. Um, we've identified new positions and also uh, position, I believe one position that we closed um, is actually really a replacement. So we close one position but, and then open a new one. Um, we've, um, we wanted to really um, separate, kind of sort it out. So um, it's clear where the money is coming from, how it's being funded. Um, so the first uh, couple of lines there, you're seeing uh, unrestricted general fund. Um, uh, uh, for a, uh, a 0.6, a total of 0.6 FTE. Um, uh, these FD, uh, the 0.6 FTE is uh, the high school, and there it, this is about $68,000 um, uh, increase, which it, um, which decreases our fund balance. So the so that is the only one that I um, um, I'm reporting uh, that it will impact our reserves. But then the rest of the positions, as you can see, new positions, um, a lot of new positions um, that are um, mo most of, well, not, I shouldn't say most, but um, you're, you're seeing um, uh, quite a few there for the virtual academy, uh, for the elementary, as well as the middle school. Uh, so those are being funded out of um, the one-time money that we are going to receive, um, which is SR3. Um, and then the other positions on the second page, those were identified positions through the ZBB process, but we're bringing this, they're included here. 
um, because we now have um, uh, actual positions and they are being funded out of the ELO grant. Are there any questions or comments? We'll say I appreciate the report a great deal. Thank you very much to both you and I'm sure Raul had a hand to this. Uh, we have brought on an, a number of new people because of the COVID situation. Fortunately, we have the funds to cover that for this year and maybe next year. Uh, but, you know, this is an easy thing to lose track of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I appreciate you bringing it up. It's an action item. So. I'd like to move approval of the new enclosed positions on the request for the personal action board as of August 18th, 2021. Thank you. And I'll second that. Thank you, Dolly. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I will call for the vote. Uh, is this one considered a personnel issue? This one is actually not. No, okay, Jennifer. Yes. Thank you. Lavender? Yes. Dolly? Yes. Dot? Yes. And I will say yes, so it's approved four to zero. Thank you for that. And on to the personnel report. Sort of along the same lines, we've been working previously to try to make sure our vacancies are filled so that what you have in front of you is our work for the summer the past month a lot of positions that we've been trying to fill and we've been slowly adding people and we've been doing a great job with doing that so ask the board and well one thank you for your support for this and as well as recommend to approve the uh, board report i'll thank move you. to approve the personnel report thank you i'll second thanks for both any further comment? Hearing none. Lavender? Yes. Do Dot? Yes. Or Dolly? Sorry, got out of order. There. Okay. Yes. <laughs> what do I say? <laughs> <laughs> Just want to see if you're awake. Or maybe it's if I'm awake. And I'll say yes. So the personnel report is approved four to zero, hopefully. On to item F. Our, uh, <clears throat> Oh, I guess we're just hearing about this. Is that right? It's this is, yeah, Dr. I wanted to say a few words about this. Sure, and I'll be really brief. Um, as you may recall with Assembly Bill 104, it allowed us to provide pass, no pass grades uh, to for, for this year's 10th through 12th graders uh, so that they're held harmless for any negative impact on their grading. However, recent guidance from the North Coast section and California Interscholastic uh, Federation, uh, which is our sports leagues, uh, recently informed us that for students who have pass, no pass, because those grades do not carry a grade point with them, some students who get all pass, no pass marks would then have no GPA. Yeah. So those students would be determined to be ineligible. So what this adjustment to our uh, BP does for uh, athletic eligibility is solely for the purposes of athletic eligibility. We're going to be applying a grade point for pass marks. We will not be entering those grade points into students' transcripts for academic reasons. This is only for athletic eligibility. This only impacts this current marking period uh, because athletic eligibility is by marking period. So it only impacts students who got all passes during the fourth quarter and moving into this year would be ineligible for the first quarter of this year. So I'll move to adopt AR 6145. I'll second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? I just Lavender? wanted to say it goes to show when you try to do the right thing to provide that space, hold kids harmless that there are other systems that prevent this from happening. And I really appreciate us making it so that kids will be really held harmless. Thank you. Good. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, um, Jennifer? Yes. Lavender? Yes. Dolly? Yes. Dot? Yes. And also, yes, so it is approved four to zero. Thank you. 
we're down to uh, figuring out who's going to the parent club meetings. So I assume we have Dolly. I was going to volunteer for some spots there. I believe the, the one for uh, Kenyon Middle School. Oh, Kenyon Middle School, November 9th, and Creekside, February 8th, and I believe Palomaris. But, you know, if that's too many, then I'm willing to drop one off. Lavender? I was going to say, I can't do. Stanton, because I'll be not here available. Um, so I'll take two of anything under not September. <laughs> so whatever you want to split with me, Dolly. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, let me look at. Uh, Let me just look at a calendar quickly. <laughs> okay. And my name's already there. Yeah. I responded to this. Oh, okay. okay. I will take whatever's left over. No, you're already there too. Great. You're there too. Good for me. You also responded to this. You're Tuesday. Yeah, but I didn't think so. September Maybe you September twenty first, I can do that. Okay. I'll take that one. Sure. So do we have them all covered now? Um yeah. Amy, do you have them all? You're yes. you're good. Okay, okay. So given the list that we have, I guess it is an action item. I, I move that we approve. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know the number on this. Assignment, Assignment of board members to parent meetings. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to the vote. What do you say, Jennifer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lavender. Yes. Dolly. Yes. Dot. Yes. I'll say yes. Thank you. We're done with that one. Down to, I guess there's no public comment to do. Uh, the superintendent's report. I um the only thing I wanted to share was that is it restaurant block on August twenty first, yeah, <laughs> August twenty first. So um that's Wait, where August twenty first. No, I meant. So must be September. September. I said, like, wait, what's today? Is it? Do you have it, right? They're missing. September twenty. Did I say August twenty first? Yeah, September twenty first. It's the twenty uh, fourth annual walking tour, featuring. It's called the Restaurant Walk, so you can purchase uh, a book of tickets from uh, Rotary for about twenty dollars, and then you get to go and taste food at different restaurants and to support um, the uh, businesses in town. So that's all I wanted to share. So it is an outdoor event, just walking along and, and visiting the various restaurants. So good event, good cause. Uh, anything else, Arvind? Okay, Jennifer, anything else? Um, no, not really. Not required, but if you <laughs> no. Okay, thank you. Lavender? I uh, participated with Gary Howard Parveen, um, and um, we met to discuss the hard uh, subcommittee, and that was great. I didn't do, I don't recall doing anything else for the district. Um, and then just a reminder to everyone, I will be out starting September 2nd through approximately the 24th-ish, um, all things pending. So I should only miss one meeting as long as everything goes well. Thank you, Dolly. Um, I don't have anything uh, that I was doing in representing the district because last week was my first week back with students. I was so happy to see my students. Um, my whole, um, I sort of got rid of a lot of that sort of COVID doldrums, whoop. The, the students just energized. By the time I was Friday, I was just like, whew, that's what I needed. I needed students in my life. And I'm just so happy, really, to be back uh, teaching in the classroom. Um, I was at the parent leadership meeting uh, last week, um, and it was great to see the parents, and um, even though we weren't in person, and hear all of the things that are happening. A lot of parent clubs are meeting in person, 
maybe not having their meetings in person, but they're gathering parents together in outdoor spaces and, you know, doing that community building that our schools are so good at. Um, and also it was through that meeting that um, the parent from Proctor shared an opportunity for us to support their food distribution program. So I connected with her and I have signed us up to, to do food distribution on um, Tuesday, September 7th. Um, and it's not a huge commitment of time. It's four to 5.30. They provide the training. Um, they just need our efforts to move the boxes and bags into the trunks of people's cars. So I have committed us to 10 volunteers and I understand if you can't make it, I'm sure that I can easily come up with um, volunteers to replace the folks who can't. Um, so I appreciate the responses that I've gotten from all of you. Um, and then last night was the Jensen Ranch PTA meeting. And again, it was nice to hear, uh, you know, parent chatter again about school being in person and pick up and drop off concerns and traffic, excuse me, traffic safety. Um, so that's it that for what I've represented the board in. Next week is the ROP meeting. So I will be there next Thursday. Thank you, Doc. I just have a couple of things uh, with uh, the superintendent. I attended some training on uh, conducting board meetings put on by the Santa Cruz County Board, County Office of Education. Hopefully I'll be able to learn how to run a meeting here eventually. <laughs> and I have um, in the last couple of weeks attended a couple of meetings with Public Health Commission. And those are very interesting. A lot of talk clearly about COVID and about how the county is doing and so forth. So the very interesting meetings. So that's all I have. Uh, so thanks very much to everybody who attended either online or in person. And we're glad to be back. So I'll declare the meeting closed. Thank you all. Thank you.